In this video, we are going to go over the passenger base for the T9 Automoblox project. So if you have me in class, go ahead and navigate to our OneNote binder and go to this page. And let's read through these directions together. So you're going to use this video tutorial and this image below with all the dimensions to create the part for the uh, passenger base. Some new tools that I'm going to teach you in this project are a polygon tool, and we'll use that to create this star. And then you're also going to learn about a shell tool and how to use it, and we'll do that towards the end of the video. And then don't forget to make sure that you screen clip in a picture right above this one. So you'll click your mouse or your cursor here and add in your screen clip with the browser to ensure you get your progress points for this project. So what I'd like you to do now is go into Inventor, make a new part file, and save as into your T9 Automoblox folder and call it Passenger Base. So please go do that now. So what you want to do before you even get started is you want to just take a look at the model, kind of soak in what is being provided, and you want to look at the orientation right away. So notice how it's sitting flat and we're probably extruding up. So that's something you want to make note of because when you first start this, you need to make sure that you start the 2D sketch on the top XZ plane there. So when I click on that, I'm now in the top view, but you want to watch out on the view cube. You want to make sure that you can actually read this. So I'm going to use the rotate over here just to kind of rotate it. And then now I can begin sketching that first initial sketch of the rectangle, and then I can extrude it going up. Now the reason we're doing that is it's going to make our life easier later on when we go to do the assembly that this part is already orientated correctly. So I'm going to start in that top view, and that's something that's important that will help you out later on down the road. So what am I expecting you to be able to do on your own so far? You should be able to do everything you see on the screen here all on your own. You should be able to draw the initial rectangle, extrude it. You should be able to use the uh, sketch and a point and then create this with the hole tool. You should be able to create this square cutout. And you should be able to use the or create this equilateral triangle here and extrude cut that. Quick note, just a quick tip on the triangle. It is an equilateral, so you're going to have to use some equal constraints to create that. So what you're going to need to do now is pause the video and get caught up with me. You want to be in this same situation that I'm in right now, and you should have all of this done for the part so far. So pause the video, go look at the OneNote binder, and create everything that you see here, and then come back and watch the video, and I'm going to show you how to do the star. And then I'm going to show you how to use a shell pattern, or I'm sorry, a shell tool, and then uh, we'll knock this one out. So pause and go catch up with me. And just in case, I forgot to mention that you're going to want to break all these down into separate sketches and extrusions. So if you notice, I did, first I did the rectangle, then I did a sketch, or I did the hole, then I did the square and then I did the triangle. So I broke each one of those up into its own sketch and extrusion. Okay, so let's jump into the star cutout. So I'm going to click on this face. Make sure that your view cube is right side up. If you have to rotate, go ahead and do that. You need to be able to read that. And then what I would like you to do is create that construction circle that has a diameter of 0 0.605 and then locate it with those two dimensions. So please go ahead and do that now. All right, so now that we got that, I can move into the new tool that I'm going to teach you, which is a polygon. And I'm going to leave my construction turned on because I still want this in the construction layer. So if you see this pentagon here, this five-sided sh uh, shape is in the construction line. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that turned on. I'm going to drop down the rectangle tool and go to polygon down on the bottom. I'm going to change the number of sides here to five. And then if you look down in the bottom right, 
it's saying select cent or sorry bottom left it's saying select center polygon so where's the center going to be well it's going to be right in the middle of our construction circle so i'm going to click that first you'll see the green dot now as i move my mouse i can see that i'm starting to draw that polygon but i need to make sure that i snap down right here at the bottom of the circle here almost if you think in degrees this is 270 right here so I'm just going to snap right to the circle right there. You'll see that icon change there. So I'm going to click right there. And then you notice I now have my construction polygon. So I'm going to close out of that. I'm going to turn off my construction layer. And I'm going to hit escape on the keyboard. And now I'm ready to start drawing the star. So I'm going to go to the line tool. Now I'm going to start at this top right corner of my polygon. I'm going to left click at that green dot, move my mouse straight down, make sure I have a perpendicular constraint on, and I'm going to type in 0.187. That, that number was given to us in the drawing in OneNote. And then I'm going to simply just go down here and click this point of the polygon. And then now this where, is where it can get a little tricky. So I'm going to left click again at this point because I want to start drawing a new line. Now what you need to do, I'm going to zoom in down here. You need to make sure that you're going to reference the midpoint of this line of the polygon or this side of it. So see the green dot? So I'm just going to let my mouse hover over that green dot and then move it straight up in this direction. So if you look, it's referencing it and boom, right there. You see it snap and then you see the perpendicular. So three key things you want to look for. You want to make sure that the distance is still 0.187. You see that highlighted there in blue. I see a perpendicular constraint popping up and another quick reference that you could look to make sure you're drawing the right line is that 162 degrees. So I'm going to left click there and then I'm going to simply just go over here, left click down on the bottom of the polygon here, see the green dot, and then I'm going to hit escape. So we have one, two, three, four sides of the star so far. Now I don't feel like drawing all that again so I'm going to use the mirror tool. So I'm going to use a line, and I'm going to turn on my construction. So I'm going to click that. And I'm just going to click the middle of, a, of the circle and just make a straight line, a, a vertical line. Notice the vertical constraint. And I'm just going to left click. Don't worry about the distance. Just make sure you're going straight up. I'm going to hit escape to get out of the line tool, and I'm going to turn off my construction. Then I'm going to go ahead and click on this line. And now I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard and click the other ones. So right here, click that, click that, and click that. To do that, you have to hold Shift. I let go of the Shift key now, and I'm going to click on Mirror. So all of my lines have already been selected, so I'm going to go to Mirror Line, and my Mirror Line is that construction line I just drew. I'm going to Mirror across that. After I click it, I can click Apply, and then I'm going to close. And now you see we have this other portion of the star there. <clears throat> Next thing I'm going to do is go back to my line tool. I'm going to start here. We got two more to draw. So I'm going to click left click here. Now again I'm going to reference the midpoint of this line and I'm going to come straight down till I see the point one. Whoops. Where are you? There. Straight down, 0.187. Now hold on, it's oh, you got to be careful here. Got to make sure. Ooh, that's a little off. One second. All right, hit escape for me. Let's get out of that. Hit escape to get out of that. We're gonna go a different route because this wasn't working the way I wanted. I'm gonna scoot this dimension over here so it's not in my way. Let's go back into the line. I'm gonna go at it from this side. So I'm gonna zoom in up here, up top, so I can really make sure I'm doing and getting what I want here. I'm going to left click once here. I'm going to bring my mouse over. Now I'm going to reference the midpoint of this. I'm not clicking, just hovering over. And I'm going to bring my mouse straight down till it hits the uh, 0.187. Again, three things. You got the length is correct. You have your perpendicular. And notice the degrees is 162. So I'm going to left click. Then I'm simply going to close off and click there. Hit escape to get out of the line tool. Finish our sketch, extrude, 
Let's click our shape for our profile. We want to cut and the distance I'm going to just change to all to go all the way through and say OK. And then uh, while I'm here, let's go ahead and add our fillets. Our fillet for that was, what is our fillet? A radius of 0.2. So let's go ahead and add that in. Oops, I lost my toolbar here. Fillet radius 0.2. Click my edges. Say OK. And we're good to go with that. And now we can move into the shell tool. So the shell tool is under the 3D model ribbon. And if you just hover over it and kind of get an idea what it does, it pretty much hollows out the inside to reduce material. So you're using less material. This thing is not solid on the inside. There's just an inner wall. So we're going to use that tool next. So I'm going to click on shell. I'm going to change the thickness because in the picture in the OneNote binder it said that the shell thickness is 0 0.01 so go ahead and change that and I'm going to simply click on and if you look very closely at your model right now you can see that it's hollowing out the inside except for where those cutouts are right so everything on the inside is going to be hollow there's just going to be a 0 0.01 uh, wall right there around everything so I'm going to click on OK and you'll notice it has now added, been added to the browser. If you hover over it, you can see it. The other way you could also check it out is if you go to view and change your visual style, you can change that to wireframe. And now you can actually orbit around and you can see that thin shelled wall that has been created. I'm going to go ahead and switch my visual style back to the original, which was shaded with edges. And the last thing we're going to do for this part file is set up the material which in the picture it said ABS plastic. Let's go ahead and drop that down and switch that. And then I chose to go with a sky blue dark. It just creates a nice contrast. Go ahead and pick your color. Don't go crazy. Just go with a simple purple, red. Uh, you know, don't go with some of these crazy like steel galvanized or anything like that. Just go with a regular straight color. Uh, don't use black because it tends to lose detail within the model cause, just because it's so dark. So choose something that's going to pop a little bit. Pick a color you like. And then finally update your eye properties. Go to physical, hit update. So now we can calculate all that based on the model. And then hit save. And you are done with the passenger base. The last thing you'll want to do is make sure you get your progress points. So you're going to want to window shift S. Grab your browser and your model and go ahead and paste it into your binder right there. So that way I can see what you did and I can give you your progress points.